As a mass production 3D printing company, we're often told what type of products we can and cannot make. And one type of product that we're often told we can't make is a water bottle, something that is food safe, is waterproof, and is durable and reliable. And since we can't make it, we decided to just go ahead and do it. Yeah. So water bottles, when traditionally manufactured, are made either with plastic, glass, or some sort of metal, generally stainless steel. So if it's plastic, what you would have to do is you would have to get a mold, and then you would either injection mold, blow mold, or sometimes rotational mold uh, the water bottle itself. Very often it's a blow mold because that's very fast and efficient and fairly low cost. If you were using glass, it would also probably be a blow mold. Basically a tube with a blob of glass on the end of it that they shoot air into and then expands to fill the cavities of the mold and then you get the shape of the glass bottle. And then metal is sort of similar in that you would use what is actually a die or a press mold, a compression mold, some type of system where basically a large piston hits a sheet of metal and then forms it into the shape of whatever the die actually is. The problem with all of those processes is that if you are creating a new type of water bottle design, a different shape, a different size, a different style, you have to get a whole new mold or die made. You have to carve some giant rock in the shape of your bottle in order to have the bottle form to that shape. And it's very expensive. It can cost tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to create that die, which is why we all end up with just standard cylinder water bottles and the only embellishment that anybody ever puts onto them is printing a new logo on the front of them. Now, that's all fine and dandy if you're making millions of them, but if you're wanting to try a new design or start manufacturing a new product, that upfront expense is very high risk. 3D printing has the huge advantage of not having really any significant startup costs. You don't have molds, you don't have the large amounts of shipping, and you're able to try new things and iterate and change the design over time until you hit what your customers actually want. But generally when people look at 3D printed products, they consider them to be inferior for these types of food applications. They say, well, a water bottle, 3D printing, especially FDM, is not waterproof. And 3D printing FDM is not generally considered to be food safe because it's very difficult to clean because of the layer lines. And then there's questions about cosmetics and that kind of stuff. So we did literally just want to go through and debunk every one of those because they're all just incorrect. Right here is a fully FDM 3D printed water bottle that is waterproof and can be washed and cleaned and is as reliable as any other water bottle and arguably as beautiful as any other water bottle. The design of it, you can see the outer texture of it is kind of peened, which is like being hit with a sand blaster so that you have a nice kind of sandy texture that is almost impossible to get with other types of manufacturing without adding a huge amount of expense. And then of course we were able to embed the logo on the front. And then with this design, the way it's set up is that if we wanted to go with something other than just this white kind of faceted design, you can actually embellish and create something a bit more unique. This is actually a finned design where basically you have all of these fins around the outer side, which can be embellished upon in order to create like dragon scales or maybe leaves or some kind of organic shape or pattern. You can make these wavy. We decided to make them straight just to make it easy. But this design is actually almost impossible to manufacture any other way because all of these fins would make it so difficult to make a mold that would be able to release this part that it's almost cost prohibitive to even try. But it looks great, it's very unique, and actually has a functional benefit because these also serve as like buffer protection and that kind of stuff, so you don't have to worry about damaging or denting your bottle because these act kind of as springs on the outside. So you can engineer and design new types of aesthetics and new types of functions that were never possible before. And again, we were able to do this in the day or two that we had to make this video rather than spending weeks, months, and hundreds of thousands of dollars to make the one shot that you have to get right with traditional manufacturing. So how do we actually do this? Well, the, the design of these is actually set up to be made in two halves. And the two halves uh, look like this. This is one half of that white standard water bottle. It is has been optimized for mass production with FDM printing. So it actually prints on the head right here. Since we have this chamfered faceted design, you don't have to worry about side extrusion on the first layer. It's very clean. It comes off looking very nice. And there's a minimum amount of surface contact. So we don't have to worry about like staining of the white light color on the first layer and that kind of stuff, which can sometimes occur. And then over here you have a groove 
and a tongue. This is so you can print two identical halves, but basically have them pressed together. So you print this part twice, and then you can press it together to make the water bottle. And up here at the top, you can see it's actually angled so that you don't have any sort of supports or overhangs that you have to deal with. And that is how you make the water bottle. But now you might be sitting there and asking, okay, well, how is it actually waterproof in that context? Because these two halves, we must be putting a glue or sealant in between the two halves. And that's actually quite incorrect. What we are doing is we're using what is traditionally used with like processes like cardboard cartons and that kind of thing. If you've ever purchased a cardboard carton of milk, you have seen that it is has a small kind of plastic inner liner. Some of these cardboard and paper bottles use like a wax or some variation, but generally some very thin plastic layer that allows it to seal paper because paper is neither food safe nor waterproof either. But putting that inner layer in it makes it so. So we basically took that same approach and we got a hold of these bladder based water bottle inserts that we could use for this project. This bladder is not very durable, not very reliable. You can't throw this into a backpack and use it in any sort of way. So the outer casing actually protects this as well as gives it better aesthetics and better appearance. But this is able to hold water reliably, is completely washable, and is very low cost. So it adds very little to the manufacturing of these things. So you take this and two halves together and you end up with a water bottle like this one right here, which is fully functional and reliable. So now we have taken a very low cost internal bladder that uses a very minimal amount of kind of not great plastic. And now we're able to focus on the outer casing, which has the functional benefits, the aesthetic benefits, and the cost benefits, because this costs absolutely nothing to manufacture. And you're able to instead focus on manufacturing the outer casing and put all of the cost of what would have gone into molds for your one shot into designs and iterations to really refine the product into something interesting and reliable. Ultimately, the lesson that we really want people to take away from this, though, is that no process is inherently limited. You are limited by your ability to engineer for that process. 3D printing has incredible benefits. The fact that you don't have the startup costs of molds, that you are able to change the design over time and create something that was basically unmoldable before, create something completely unique that couldn't exist before, allows you to create products that are competitively different from what anybody else has made before. So there's an opportunity to create entirely new types of products, but it does have limitations. It is tough to make a water bottle with purely the printing process. So you have to find the solutions that allow you to create exactly what you want and how you want it without adding extra cost. It can be done and it is done often by many, but it is difficult and requires a concentrated problem solving process of how do you get what you need. And basically it's knowing initially what you need. We wanted a water bottle. So we went ahead and we made a water bottle and found the way to do it. That is the engineering and product design process. So hopefully that video was enlightening. You can create basically any product with mass production printing and produce it affordably, reliably, and at scale. And if you design for it correctly, you can create whatever it is you want, regardless of what the needs might be. Maybe it's a spaceship, maybe it's a water bottle, maybe it's just a toy on your Shopify site. But using printing gives you the advantage of creating new products very quickly and very reliably so you can test them, find out what works, find out what customers are interested in, and then move on from there without having to swing for the fences every time you try to create a new product and hope that it goes right. Comment down below if there's other products that you'd like us to re-engineer for mass production 3D printing. This was a really fun video to do to really show kind of the misconceptions about product design and how to create a product that people aren't really used to. This is a fully functional water bottle and it was a lot of fun to work on. But yeah, let us know if there's anything else out there that's impossible to make, because it's probably not. Have a great day, everybody.